What's up, Amp Unit? I know you're here for a little bit of Rey Mysterio talk, but before we get to Rey Mysterio, I just wanted to thank everybody who participated in Thursday night's poll question that I asked you guys on Amplified Q&A, and that was if the NWO was in their prime and they took on the Shield, who wins? We're a little over 24 hours removed from that question, not even 48 hours, and we had over 200 responses and over 150 of you guys are in favor of the NWO. Only 50 something of you guys are for the Shield. So this has been a blowout, an absolute crushing in favor of the NWO. So the NWO is alive and well. And again, that video, if you didn't see it, I'll have it in one of these corners, left or right at the end of this video. Just click on that box and that'll take you to that video. So I anticipate for the next 24 hours at least, more responses to come in. But at this point, it looks like the NWO is crushing it. Over 150 responses for the NWO. That is over 100 of a difference. Over 100 responses in favor of the NWO, only 50 something for the Shield. Guys, I, I thought it might be a little bit of a lopsided victory. I did not expect that. The NWO has crushed it. And again, thank you guys for responding, man, because I did want to get a gauge where the Amplified unit was at. So if you haven't seen the video, you haven't responded, you can still do it, man. I'm still going to be taking a look at the responses as they come in, but it looks like the NWO is not losing this. Let's talk a little bit of Rey Mysterio now. All right, guys, so now that we got the tallies out and the NWO just crushed the shield the nwo in their prime according to the amplified unit crushed the shield man those are some telling fucking numbers uh again that was well over 24 hours close to 48 hours and plenty of time man for that shield that shield fan base to step the fuck up but i think people just saw the nwo and in their prime what three-man faction is really taking them out You'd be hard-pressed to find three individuals to take out Kevin fucking Nash, Diesel, Scott Hall, Razor Ramon, and Hulk Hogan. Man, awesome fucking poll. Again, want to thank everybody for participating, man, because that's the only way that this was going to work, that we were truly going to gauge where everybody was at. But let's get to Rey Mysterio, guys. I want to take five or ten minutes and just talk Rey Mysterio. It is official. He's coming back to WWE. Through his own words, he said he's just waiting on the phone call as to when exactly. But all of his prior commitments have been fulfilled. His last one being all in in Chicago. So now Vince McMahon makes the call. Does he make the call for... October 6th's Super Showdown, right? He's trying to get all the best talent, all of his biggest names. You're telling me you have Rey Mysterio in, in your grasp, in your hold, and you're not going to bring him over for the Super Showdown October 6th? I say he shows up in some form or facet, maybe in a match, an interference, something where he plays a big part. That is a huge name that you have right now under your company umbrella, and you're not going to bring him over? I think he definitely goes over to Crown Jewel November 2nd. But here's the booking, right? Do we see Rey Mysterio this Monday night on Raw or Tuesday on SmackDown? Do we see him at the Super Showdown? Do we wait until Crown Jewel? This is how I would book Rey Mysterio because everybody already has this guy being booked as a champion. How can we put the strap on Rey Mysterio? I think we all can agree he belongs on SmackDown. That's the only way where Rey Mysterio can be Rey Mysterio and get the time he needs in matches and such. In his style, just everything, I believe it fits better on SmackDown. I think we all can basically agree on that. But if you do that, you got AJ Styles over there, you got Daniel Bryan over there. We're already saying it, it's a shame what they're doing to Shinsuke. Sure, he's got the United States strap, but he's basically in obscurity with a championship. Which I shouldn't be that flabbergasted by, I shouldn't be that boggled in my mind by, because they push any and everybody into obscurity, whether you have a championship or not. But there's so many top-level superstars there that could easily hold the heavyweight championship, and it's just the most fucking oddest booking. Even for SmackDown standards, who are leaps and bounds better than Raw lately. But even SmackDown has an abundance of talent 
that you can't just throw the championship on everybody, man. AJ Styles is continuing a great run that he's having. And Daniel Bryan, we believe, would be next in line. So now you bring over Rey Mysterio, and we already have people saying Rey Mysterio is going to be the next champion. You know on Raw, he would never hold that championship. That's being, that's being literally overtaken by Roman Reigns. His empire is clutching that championship, thanks to Vince McMahon. So he totally has that, hosti- that title hostage. But over on SmackDown, sure, there's avenues to get the title over to Rey Mysterio. But why does Rey Mysterio have to just show up and get thrusted into title opportunities? Now, yes, it's true. I've never been the biggest Rey Mysterio fan. So you could say, yeah, BC, it's easy for you to say that. But Mysterio, he deserves to be thrusted in that spot. But it wouldn't make any sense. Rey Mysterio has been gone for years, A. But B, he's very injury prone. C, at this age that he is now, well into his 40s, he should be helping out the younger talent. Whenever I stick up for the Brock Lesnar's and the Undertaker's and think they should be at WrestleMania, they should take a spot, they should even win. I get lambasted by people going, they're taking spots, they should be there for the younger talent. And you're telling me Rey Mysterio shouldn't be? Rey Mysterio, if he was around... Today in his prime, and not yesterday as in years ago, he would just be a cruiserweight to Vince McMahon, and you know it. Rey Mysterio came at a time where he got thrust into that position, yes, with a whole lot of skill and a whole lot of talent, but there was a lot of luck for the look and the feel and the exact type that Vince McMahon was going for at that time. Trust me, and Rey Mysterio got fortunate because of that. And we as fans, even though I'm not a big fan of Mysterio, I can agree we were the benefactors. We were the ones that really won out because watching Rey Mysterio in that ring in main events and kicking ass was awesome. And I can't wait to see it again. But you don't gotta throw championships on him. This is how I book Rey Mysterio. A way to keep him in the spotlight, entertain the masses, get him his money, get him big time epic matches, while also bringing up Younger talent. I have him starting off at Survivor Series. So a month, five weeks beforehand, four weeks, five weeks beforehand, Survivor Series, you set up the angle where you're going to have your big epic five on five. And again, I have him placed on SmackDown. So it would be SmackDown's men's five on five. And he joins the big face five team, five man team for Survivor Series. So right off the bat, he's a big component in a big matchup right at Survivor Series, and he's rubbing elbows with some of SmackDown's top talents, their top faces. Right off the bat, Survivor Series, Rey Mysterio's in this big-time match. We go over to January's Royal Rumble, and just like he was one of the longest reigning superstars to last in a Rumble, I would have that same type of story unfolding, to the point where he's one of the final four, maybe even four, five, or six last competitors in that Rumble match, and he nearly wins, but Andrade Cien Almas, somebody he eliminated earlier in the night, comes out to ruin it for Rey Mysterio. So Mysterio, coming off of an awesome Survivor Series, has a kick-ass Royal Rumble to the point where he's one of the superstars you're talking about the next morning. That's how good of a performance he put on in the Rumble. And then he goes in to a feud several months leading into WrestleMania with Andrade C and Almas. You know how good Almas is. You know how good Mysterio is. It's a dream match, not just for the American fan base, but internationally as well. And you let them rock out underneath the WWE umbrella. The first match, I would have Mysterio win. That would be at like Fastlane a month after Royal Rumble. And then when you go to WrestleMania... Andrade Cien Almas for weeks has been badgering for another match because he thinks that was a fluke. And to make it more more official that it's not just going to be a fluke match, to guarantee that it won't be a fluke, Andrade wants it to be best out of three falls match. Two out of three falls you have to take at WrestleMania. And Mysterio obliges. And if they give them the time of day and let them go out there and do what they're capable of doing at Fastlane, that WrestleMania match and a best out of three falls match would be epic. So Mysterio comes off of an amazing fucking Survivor Series and Royal Rumble. He goes into Fastlane. He takes a huge victory over C and Almas. But at WrestleMania, 
It's tied one-on-one, -on -one, one to one, I should say, in the best out of three. And Cian Almas is able to overtake Rey Mysterio with the help of Zelina Vega. A little bit of cheatery at the end, but it's Almas who has his hand ultimately raised at WrestleMania, the place where Rey Mysterio was hoping to have his hand raised. The place where Rey Mysterio has been waiting to come back to for years. And I want him to say that in promos beforehand. Like, he can't wait to have his hand raised. He's been dreaming of that moment for years. And it was Almas that stole it from him. At WrestleMania. And then after WrestleMania, we don't stop. I think I would kill off the Almas feud at that point. But for the next couple of months, I would have him in a feud with an NXT call-up that should have been called up the day after WrestleMania. And a feud is started between Velveteen Dream and Rey Mysterio for the next couple of months. Leading towards SummerSlam, but not at SummerSlam, because another NXT call-up to the SmackDown brand, Ricochet. I want to see Ricochet and Rey Mysterio one-on-one -on -one in a dream match for WWE at SummerSlam. Let me say that again. Under the WWE umbrella, Ricochet versus Rey Mysterio. Picture that shit. Close your eyes. Fathom that shit. Open them. Pinch yourself, because it ain't happening yet. But i like to see that at SummerSlam 2019. Coming off the heels of an Andrade C and Almas feud and a Velveteen Dream feud, and now you're in there with Ricochet, and it's a face versus a face. No fucking dastardly heel deeds going on the weeks prior. This is a handshake. We need to see who the better man is. And the crowd will be... Entertained? That's not even doing it justice. We will be fucking probably on the floor in awe after you give these two gentlemen 25 minutes to do what they do best. Steal the fucking show. And I don't even want to book past SummerSlam. I'm just giving you guys a whole half year plus of Rey Mysterio booking. And you don't have to throw a championship on him right when he comes back. For no fucking reason. Literally, you could keep on trying to fucking build up Shinsuke. Build up the roster you have now. Get Daniel Br Bryan, Daniel Bryan, back his fucking championship. Because you're damn right, if anybody deserves it, it wouldn't be Rey Mysterio just because he came back. It would be Daniel fucking Bryan who deserves to take it from AJ Styles. And you guys know I'm right. Even the most diehard Rey Mysterio fan knows Daniel Bryan should be next in line come WrestleMania. Or they might fast track it toward later this year. But if anybody's taking that strap off of Styles and his name isn't Samoa Joe, then it damn sure should be Daniel Bryan. Because we already saw guys like Shinsuke Nakamura fall at the wayside and he's never been relevant again, even with the United States Championship. I wouldn't throw a championship on him. I would book him correctly. Just be creative. Just let Rey Mysterio go out there and do what Mysterio does best. Work. Steal the fucking show in what is called secondary feuds. I always got pissed at people going, Sasha and Bailey need to be together because Ronda is holding that title pitcher. Over there on Raw. She's holding that in everybody's grasp. But now, there's no place for Sasha or any of the other ladies, so you gotta throw them in tag teams. Bullshit! You can't build another secondary women's feud that doesn't involve the championship? Becky Lynch and Charlotte holding everybody in their grasp, holding that championship hostage over on SmackDown? So you can't have another big ladies feud on SmackDown? That's bullshit! Secondary feuds! The championships alone shouldn't be the only feuds going on in pro wrestling. You could have just feuds. Get creative, help build the stars, build the storylines, and you could create a badass feud that people are going to give a shit about without a championship being on the line. Rey Mysterio is one of those superstars that can create that type of anticipation and drama and suspense without any title being on the line. So use that to your advantage as a company. Instead of just throwing a championship on him and giving him half-ass booking. Build him. And then after SummerSlam, if all that goes flawless and Rey Mysterio is one of your top fucking superstars and getting the biggest pops after SummerSlam 2019, then, then my friends, we might want to think about giving him another title run. One last title opportunity. 
I'm hearing he signed a two-year deal with WWE. Again, he's older now in his 40s. He's got, he's got fucking injuries galore. Very injury prone. But if he showed you that he could hold up to summer 2019 and the fans are totally backing this motherfucker to the point where he's one of your top stars through and through, night in and night out, maybe you throw a championship on him then. But right now, build him and let him do what he does best. Put him in there with other talent that can match him and watch them tear it fucking down. That's how the Amplified Man books Rey Mysterio. How would you guys book him? You got a little different way? Jot it down below. You agree? Let the Amplified Man know. Either which way, kick this weekend's ass. Much love and respect to all you guys. And again, thank you all of you who participated in that NWO Shield poll that we did on Thursday evening. Uh, that meant a lot, guys, and it really helped me, the Amplified Man, decide who the fuck you guys are in favor of. And it is the new, 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 new world order. Love those fucking guys, man. And much love and respect to all you motherfuckers, the Amplified Unit on top of the world. I'll see you guys for the Monday Night Raw review and reaction video unless I pop out another bonus impromptu video, which is always possible because... I'm a fucking, I'm a little crazy like that. I just fucking unannounced like to fucking pump out videos without anybody knowing. So always be checking the channel. All right, guys, that's it. You know the deal. A double shot what? 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 A double shot what? A mocha latte. Double shot. Grande. Fuck your tall. Yes, grande. We don't go to fucking venti yet because then we do the fucking, we double fist it. So it's actually two grandes. So that's actually more than the venti. But then you have, if you have two ventis, then that goes over the limit. And then I'm really wired. And then innocent people are getting chucked into the street and thrown in front of cabs. And then it's bad. We've already done that experiment. So two grandes at a time. And then about, uh, well, a couple hours, we'll do another two double fister. And then maybe four or five hours, we'll do another fucking just one grande. And by the end of the night, we got about seven coffee. Why am I telling you guys my coffee schedule? I drink a lot of coffee and I kick a lot of ass. That's no surprise. Right now, check you later. <laughs> Much love, guys.